while we wait for this raid to fill up, guys, because we still need, like, some healers and things like that, we could actually watch a uh, another raid video. I saw there was this Lost Ark raiding video. I think we've watched, like, part one of this a while back. It's basically a video called How Difficult is Raiding in Lost Ark? And this is the second part of that video. I really like the first one, and, you know, I have played a little bit of Lost Ark myself as well, so... um. I think we'll watch this video, guys. We will be doing a raid in WoW in a little bit as well, but we are just waiting for people to show up. So let's just watch this so we can uh, we, we can learn a little bit while we wait, yeah? Let's uh, let's see what this is, guys. Is raiding in Lost Ark. All right. Welcome back. This is part two of how difficult is raiding in Lost Ark. This time we're dissecting the finale against the space opera phantom, Alvershud. As a disclaimer, if you're trying to face this boss in the future blind, you should stop watching this video as it contains fight spoilers. Otherwise, okay. it's kind of like a That's guide, fine. but a really terrible one. The video is just meant for entertainment for people to hear about mechanics that aren't obvious by just watching the gameplay. At the time okay. of recording, this is the highest level encounter in Lost Ark and the most mechanically complex fight to date. A6 is a... Okay, so this is like the creme de la creme. This is like the hardest, this is the hardest it can possibly get. 20 to 25 minute endurance battle against 28.5 billion HP split across 250 health bars. If you made the DPS... Did he say 25 minute boss fight? Imagine you wipe 20 minutes into it and you gotta do... Oh my god. Check in the previous fight in phase 5, your damage is sufficient to clear phase 6 since there's more damage uptime and a longer fight timer. The okay. reward for clearing phase 6 isn't unique, but you're guaranteed two legendary engraving books, additional ancient fragments for crafting, and a small chance of looting the highly coveted Esther Stone. Clearing this battle is not necessary for okay. anything in particular, but there are achievements linked to it. You can progress your gear fine by opting to skip this fight and just clearing the earlier fights in the raid for materials. Okay. Besides for 27 unique attacks, some of which are strengthened after the second half of the fight begins. 27 unique attacks. Dude, I play WoW. I play WoW Classic. Illidan has like two abilities, okay? There are four <laughs> major gimmicks that can be tricky to resolve, two which have repeat, and a final desperation attack at 1 HP that's mostly for theatrics. The first major gimmick appears at 225 lines of health. All raiders induce a hallucination and are isolated from the rest of the group, while a shape appears throughout their screen. Memorize this shape, since it'll be important in a moment. A demon spawns in the center okay. tile, checking orbs would reduce your movement speed if you're hit by them, but we can cheese this by standing in a narrow blind spot behind it. Afterwards, yeah. oh. two rows or columns of the map grid will start to light up, and you must navigate to a spot that isn't lit. This is repeated three times. While this is happening, you'll occasionally be afflicted with a debuff which flips your controls, symbolized by a purple swirling ball above your head, making your character move in the opposite direction of where you click. This debuff will turn on and off a few times during this. If you're that struck by one of the lit up grid spaces, you'll be killed. After three of these, everyone has released- Okay, so this is phase one, guys. Um, yeah. That's phase one. So far, you have to remember, like, some weird triangles or whatever that shows up. Your character loses controls of the movement, and it's, like, opposite. And then there's also, like, mechanics flying around in the game. Okay. ...from the hallucination, and Albert should teleport to the center. To start releasing the same orbs from before, which reduced movement speed. By hitting her and standing close by, a shape will appear near her. Oh. One player that saw this shape in the hallucination must guide the other seven players to the safe grid spots as Abrashid will repeat the attack again in the same order that they saw it before. Once this is resolved, ah. players can fight again normally, but the next gimmick appears very shortly. Several tornadoes travel across the map dealing heavy damage to anyone they touch. A few players have a debuff that can be removed if the tornado touches them, but it's important that they don't remove it. The player Dude. still has the debuff and it naturally expires, they're sent to another plane where there's a single black orb. They have a few seconds to destroy it. Should they fail, they spit back out to join their party and the orb blows up into a swirling vortex, greatly impeding movement and either pushing or pulling players away gradually. This lasts for a very long time and makes DPSing the boss very difficult, so destroying the orb is important. More yeah guys, destroying the orb is important. Uh, remember that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Players that lose their debuff by getting hit by a tornado, the more difficult it'll be to break the orb. DPS continues until 188 lines of health. At 188 lines of health, the fight officially begins. Albert <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, now the fight begins, guys. Like, this has already been more complex than any boss I've ever done in WoW, man. And like, now it begins. Okay, that's fine. Sure, let's let's see what the fight is uh, when it starts, guys. Teleport to the center and a brief intermission plays. Meteors what? are summoned in, and each of the players is marked sequentially one second apart from one another. The rain map is split into a 3x3 three three grid. Each grid space has 3 HP. When a blue meteor lands on any of the spaces, it reduces the tile's HP by 1. 
A player marked by a golden meteor reduces the HP of the tile it lands on by three, as well as all adjacent tiles by three as well. Okay. First player during this mechanic is marked with a golden meteor, while the other seven are marked with blue ones. The raid must carefully place these meteors in such a way that no more than three tiles are destroyed at any given time. <laughs> when a fourth tile is destroyed, Aberstead will immediately perform a raid wipe. Finally, tiles regenerate back- What? The- play with full hp one minute and 40 seconds after being destroyed when that's a tile is destroyed it also means the map is shrunk as well like the first legion general Vulton, players are instantly killed if they're hit by a stagger knockback or knocked down while standing near the edge of the map you can fall off the map by getting knocked off but fortunately the game doesn't let you just walk off after resolving oh, this mechanic, cool. blue meteors will begin to fall on random party members every one minute while golden meteors will select a random party member at specific hp intervals the next which happens at 137 lines yeah after okay. 188 lines though the boss becomes considerably more dangerous our moveset is expensive There's so many ways that you can wipe already. And it's like, he, he's still ramping. The, like, we're not even a third of the way through the video. And like... Okay. Okay. ...to include several heavy knockback attacks that are designed to smack players off the map. These are the yellow telegraph attacks. No matter how geared you that are, easy. if your reflexes are slow here, you'll face a death by gravity. Okay, this looks easy. I'm not even joking. This is actually easy for me. It's important to understand what super armor options you have in yeah. a pinch. You also have to avoid taking yellow telegraphs as much as possible, since every time you're hit by one, you'll gain an infinite duration debuff, which at three stacks will cause a blue meteor to begin dropping on you. After okay. dealing with the golden meteor, you have to survive for a minute and 40 seconds for the destroyed tiles to respawn before entering the 113 line pattern. This is yeah. because you'll want the full map space for what comes next. At 113 lines, a new intermission plays. Oh god, okay. Players it's like Kologarn. In the it's like Kologarn in, in Wrath, guys. Position to dodge a quick pizza attack and then divide themselves pizza. different parts of the map to avoid the giant palm slam in the center. And you like spread out, okay. A black hole forms that gradually pulls players towards it and a huge number of red ores begin flying in from outside of the map towards the center. We can use Esther Shandy here, which is kind of like a party ultimate or a limit break if you're coming from Final Fantasy XIV, to slow down time and assist with dodging these. The red orbs deal heavy damage and inflict a debuff on the player if they get hit by it. At three stacks of this debuff, Actually. the player dies. At the same time, gold orbs will fly in as well. All players have to collect two of these in order to survive the explosion at the end. There will also be four smaller black hole orbs on four of the tiles. Four players have to each enter one of them right before the pattern ends to avoid getting sucked into the center and pulled into another dimension. You have to time this carefully, as entering the orb too early won't protect you from getting pulled in. If performed successfully, four players get pulled into the center and sent to a separate plane on the same map, while the four that enter the small black orb stay in the original plane with Abrushut. Eight phantoms of Abrushut <laughs> appear in the original plane, and the four players outside must run close to each of them. If any of the clones turn clockwise or counterclockwise, you've got to notify the team on the inside where that clone is, usually with a ping. This lets them know that the clone will appear on their side shortly at that position the clone that turns clockwise will appear on the other side and must be neutralized within two seconds while a clone that turns counterclockwise must be countered when the clone is dealt with properly it drops a golden buff that gives the player in the inner dimension a sh can he breathe he's not even breathing he's been heal that lets him survive the explosion at the end of the eight clones two will turn and this repeats in a second wave for a total of four clones and four shields when dealt with properly allowing all four players inside to survive if a clone isn't properly countered or neutralized not only is a player guaranteed to die since they won't have a shield the clone also drops a blue meteor on the tile that they were on potentially destroying yeah, it which can kill players on the outside as they won't be able to see the meteor itself the entire mechanic takes place on two versions of the same map and so quick communication <laughs> and cooperation is needed for everyone to survive this from this point onwards most of albershot's random attacks have been strengthened and have additional mechanics that you'll have to deal with the next goal imagine doing progression on this boss like imagine having a raiding like guild or whatever it is you have and you're progressing on this boss and you're like oh guys uh, now we're fa now now it's phase seven you know like what yeah i'm waiting exactly i'm waiting for the part where you have to do like an advanced calculus oh yeah now you have to find the square root of pi but you have to do that whilst also dodging the mechanics of all the previous phases as well you know it's like Gold Meteor appears at 87 lines. At 66 lines, the tornadoes will appear again, and the debuff players once again have to destroy the orb to prevent the vortex from spawning. A spawn vortex is especially deadly at this stage of the fight, where Abershot has her expanded, strengthened move set. There's one final Gold Meteor at 37 lines. After you deal with it and reach 28, yeah, the thing is, guys, like WoW players have an issue with even walking out of fire. 
you know like we like it's like you have to really specifically tell people not to stand in the fire and then we have this lines the dream world pattern repeats and you must once again memorize the shape and the safe spots to navigate to as part of the map is destroyed at this point it can be tricky to navigate from one i am horrible at stuff like this like memorizing like patterns I am really bad at that. I'm, I'm, I, I suck at that. Side to the other. But if you manage to prevail at this point, you're on the home stretch. At 25 lines, Alberthood will destroy the four corners of the map. You'll no longer kill the entire raid if more than three tiles are broken. However, oh, that's cool. blue meteors are still spawning. The map will gradually get smaller until only the center tile remains. The goal is to bring her down to seven lines of health before this happens. As the smaller the map is, the more likely people are to get knocked off. At seven lines of health, the final major gimmick begins. In an act of desperation, okay. Alberthood begins to summon one last giant meteor designed to wipe out the party is it like a dps check or what the final dps check how are we at the final okay you know what no let's keep watching it's like the big bang from uh, dragon ball he's drawing in the cosmos and then the entire like universe into like a little thing during its slow descent, you had to break through a 22.8 billion HP overshield that she gains, or 200. What? So you went from 22 bars of health to 200. Bro, the raid started. They kicked you. No, we're fine. I, I keep checking on the second monitor. Uh, I, 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 I can check it on the second monitor additional lines of health before the meteor lands in two to three minutes if you're tight on dps on this point that's a dps check close to the 20 minute enrage timer five minutes are added so you don't have to worry so much about it and any of the broken tiles possessed of the corner ones are brought back into play right away 200 more lines is ridiculous though and the following mechanic yeah. is designed to help you punch that shield while battling albershot and chipping away the shield the screen will flash at the one o'clock five o'clock seven o'clock or eleven o'clock positions this signifies yeah. that a counterable meteor will be flying in towards the center of the map this will happen five times once in each direction and one more time in one random direction when the okay. meteors arrive they'll either flash red or blue blue ones have to be countered while red ones have Two to colors. be ignored altogether if a red one is countered it'll explode dealing heavy aoe damage to players and likely knocking them off the map when a what, blue a, what a trash player man i can't believe you failed that mechanic that's so simple you failed the blue meteor landing on the certain spot mechanic dude that's fucking dude wow good job you're kicked Though the player receives a buff that when expires fires a long range laser that'll deal about 14 lines of damage to Albershot's health. In total, Ooh. five rounds of meteors will appear, of which at least 15 will be counterable, and 14 is practically required to meet the damage check. Have people in each of the quadrants with excess players prepared to assist in case two blue meteors appear in one quadrant. If you fail to break the shield, the final meteor lands, killing everyone. But if you okay. succeed, then buffs will scatter across the map. Players only need to pick up one, which will grant them a shield that lets them survive the meteor. Finally, bring Albershot down to one HP and the last gimmick occurs an orb spawns at the seven o'clock position which she summons in order to wipe out the remaining Sh surely the last mechanic when you're just about to kill her is easy right because like that's like the home stretch right players the orb has to be destroyed with normal damage before she can however it regenerates 40 million hp per second as you hit the orb buffs will pop out of it which when collected greatly increase your damage output stacking up to nine times pick up okay. as many orbs as you can and then nuke her last attack faster than it can regenerate bringing an end to the fight once and for all please stop watching here if you want to avoid story cinematic spoilers and that's it while there will be raids in the future that are tougher, Albershot's raid is definitely the most visually stunning. Sometime Dude. in 2022, we'll also have to deal with this encounter on Hell Mode, which has equalized gear, tighter DPS checks, additional mechanics, and a prestige achievement. Oh, guys, there's a Hell Mode. Yeah, no, guys, that's the easy mode. That's like raiding, like, that's LFR. Yeah, there's a Hell Mode as well with more mechanics. Because it's not like there was more, there was enough mechanics to begin with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for completing both this encounter as well as the previous one from the other video back to back with no restarts and not a single death across the entire party. I look forward to showing you all that encounter whenever it comes. Okay, we're not gonna watch the, the that's, this is lore now, like it's like the death or whatever. Um, well boys, anyone wanna make a viewer raid on Lost Ark once we get max level? Yeah, we can do some viewer raids, let's go. I'm gonna leak the raids, I'm gonna call out the mechanics, everything like that, you know, it's gonna be good. Yep, yep, yep. That is crazy though. That that this is like the hardest raid in the game though at the moment. Um but still that is even compared to like mythic raiding in retail this is like ridiculous. Like th there's so many mechanics and one shot things and like ping pong banks in the chat man. That's damn. That that's a lot of stuff dude. That is a lot of things.